Hey guys, MA Fish Guy here coming at you with a video to congratulate all of you out there in the fish keeping hobby for surviving. I know it sounds a little weird, but if you think about it, I'm going to be coming at you with a video on some of the more dangerous parts of this aquarium keeping hobby that you may have never even thought of, or you do, but maybe didn't realize all the hazards that are involved in it. So, I'm going to go over some of the top things that can be a hazard to you in this hobby. So the first is going to be aquarium glass. Now we all know how easy it is to break glass. And let's just face it, in this hobby, you're surrounded by it. It's all over the place. You have 55 gallon tanks, 10 gallon tanks, and up to two tens and everything like that. It's just all glass ready to be broken. And with any glass, it's dangerous in any sort of way when it breaks because it creates jagged points, uh, cutting edges, anything like that, it can just be dangerous in general. So please keep that in mind when you're entering into this hobby. Do not drink alcohol, some of you guys, hint, hint. And do water changes, catch fish, anything with this aquarium hobby. You want to make sure that you are being completely safe with this. So that brings me to my next one, the equipment. Now this has glass tops, glass heaters, anything like that. Again, with glass, if it breaks, it becomes dangerous. That's just a given. Uh, any kind of thing, if you have it on top and you drop it, it shatters on the ground, you step on it, it slices your foot open, you're going to the hospital. Uh, next, like I said, if you trip and fall into your tank, it's very rare that's going to happen, but it could. Uh, you break the glass. If you have kids jumping or climbing on the aquarium, it could tip over, shatter, there's just all sorts of possibilities how to break glass, but just remember it's dangerous in pretty much any aspect if you have broken glass. Next would be the electrical hazard. Now this is kind of getting discouraging with all these hazards. So electrical, you have heaters in there, you have lights, you have hoods with lights in them, you have filters, you have, you name it, it's electrical. Let's just put it this way. How many of us, raise your hand, uh, we're told, when you're in the bathtub, keep anything electrical, whether it's a TV, a radio, um, well, I've seen a lot of movies, toasters, curling irons, hair dryers, anything like that. Well then, what the heck are we doing? We got 55 gallon tanks, bigger tanks, smaller tanks, we have electrical stuff all over it. I know a lot of it's essential to keep the water heated, lights on the aquarium and stuff, but I do see some tanks out there that don't have the aquarium, tops, glass, anything protecting the light is just dangling from the ceiling right over your tank. Now if you have something securing it, great. Uh, if you've anchored it into a wall, great. Uh, but if not, and it's just hanging there, uh, you might want to look at something. Good technique to do is just get egg crate from your local hardware store, paint it black or even keep it white, doesn't matter. The black kind of helps it blend into the aquarium top hood and just put it on top. You don't even see it. It runs fluidly smooth with the top of the trim and you don't even see it and it protects. If anything falls from the top into the top of your tank, nothing's going in it. So another thing with the heaters, they could break, your fish could snap them, they can malfunction, sends an electrical current through that water and you don't realize it. You stick your hand into it wondering what happened to all my fish. Stick your hand in the aquarium and all of a sudden you get an electrical shock that you weren't expecting. And probably the one that bites me the most, literally, is if I get an air pump as part of a complete setup on Craigslist, and you're kind of monkeying with it to make sure that everything is working correctly, and you get bit by the electrical cord going into the actual air pump itself. I don't know how many times that happens, but a bite is a bite in electrical, and it just doesn't feel good at all anyway you put it. So, Next, and this is very rare, but it can happen, so I do want to bring it up, is Fish TB. Now, you can get this just from a small cut, putting your hands in the water. Now, this isn't going to affect everybody, but more people that are at risk are someone with a weakened immune system, someone maybe that's diabetic, uh, you know, small kids even. Just that weakened immune system is definitely key. It can happen by just a small cut in your hand, you dip it into the affected water with the infected fish just to move an ornament and you can get it. Uh, so if you do have any kind of health issues, anything like that, and you do want to enter this hobby, use gloves. They make elbow high gloves, they make arm high gloves, just use those. Uh, and make sure to wash your hands thoroughly afterwards and you shouldn't have a problem. Uh, so next, and actually I didn't even realize this until I really started looking around the fish room. 
chemicals. Now I know, well, the course chemicals are a concern. Well, look at the chemicals around you. How many of them actually have child-proof locks on them or child-proof twist caps? Not many. Well, eh, people and kids still do get into this hobby and maybe can take a sip or have kids that, you know, look makes it look good and they tried to just sample it. Uh, so the best recommendation I can have, if you have a cabinet with chemicals in it, lock it, put child safety locks on it, a padlock, I don't even care. Just keep your kids safe from this stuff. It's too easy for them to get into. The only chemicals I keep upstairs in my show aquarium upstairs is a bottle of water conditioner. And I actually put that into a box filter uh, from a filter I bought. And I actually have two locks on the cabinet, that way no one and nothing can get to it. And it's actually a pain in the butt for me to get to it, so I know it's going to be a little bit more difficult. And if they try to get into it, I'm going to see it and be able to stop them. So, keep in mind with that. And then the next thing with chemicals is how many of you have actually read some of the fine print uh, on the chemicals? Uh, I just did, and I have in the past, and I've seen this numerous times is this product contains a chemical known to the state of California to cause cancer. Yeah, yeah, I think I'll skip that chemical then. Uh, I don't need that, because uh, if it happens in California, it doesn't mean it doesn't happen in the other 49 states, so kind of draw the line on that one. I know it's very rare and you probably have to consume it, ingest it, something like that, but I'm not going to take my chances with that. So, if you haven't seen the movie Deuce Bigelow, Male Gigolo, um, I would watch it. It definitely shows you how easy it is to tip over a tank and the death that can come following it if you don't fix it. Uh, just by doing regular exercises. Um, yeah, it can be a dangerous hobby. Now you look at it this way. You get a dog, I understand there's rabies, uh, different diseases out there for them. They can bite, scratch, that's about it. Um, I understand that each animal has their dangers. Uh, kittens, cat scratch fever, I know that's a real thing, not just a song. My brother did have it, uh, so I definitely keep that in mind. Hamsters will bite on you, poop on you, scream, pretty much it. Uh, but yeah, you look at the aquarium hobby and I bet you'll have a whole new light and look at it now because we're surrounded by hazards. Like I said, glass, electrical, chemicals, pretty much anything to do with this hobby can be dangerous. So don't let this discourage you. It's kind of just to help to educate you and kind of show you your surroundings. It's very rare that a lot of this stuff happens as long as you're doing this stuff responsibly and in the correct manner that it should be in a sober state. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any dangers or concerns that I didn't address in this video, please post them down below in the comments. Kind of help educate everybody. So. Thank you for watching this video, and again, congratulations on surviving one of the most or, most or more dangerous hobbies out there, uh, the fish keeping hobby. So, check out my website, mafishguide.com. I'll be doing a revamp of that soon to uh, give you guys more and more products that you can buy on there at a cheaper, cheaper price. So, stay tuned, subscribe, like, and share this video. Thank you.